Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to continue on with our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the West, and this will be part one of our Air War, I guess, tutorials. Uh, it's, a, it's a section within the entire tutorial, but it should take, you know, two or three episodes because the Air War is all important in War in the West. Now, in War in the East, it's somewhat complicated, but it's really a, not the biggest part of the war. In the War of the West, War in the West, obviously the bombing campaign by the Allies makes the air war incredibly important, and so understanding that is paramount. All right, well, where to start? That's always a question uh, when we dive into a topic. Uh, as I've said in many of my other tutorials, I like to start from the ground floor and build up. Uh, if something seems too basic, to you, uh, that's fine. Uh, it might not be to someone else or not as a parent. Uh, when you're learning these things, I like to take each you know, brick, each piece of wood, put it all together, and hopefully by the end, we've got a beautiful, beautiful air tutorial. We'll see. We'll see. So let's start at the very bottom. And for that, I get to grab my pencil. And I love to have my pencil out. What is the basic component of the air war? It is planes now you may find that shocking planes and pilots so this game models down to the individual plane and the individual pilot now you do not have to control those as a matter of fact i say you don't have to really you don't necessarily control down to that level they're all named uh you know you can go look up information on them whether it be an individual pilot or an individual you know plane but you don't really control down to that level. That's probably a good thing for a micromanager. Uh, otherwise, you'd be playing this game, uh, you know, a, a couple of weeks of it for the rest of your life. So, but those are the basic building blocks that we start with. Planes, pilots, okay? Those planes and pilots make up air groups, all right? AGs, air groups. And if we look over here to the side, I've pulled up an air base and we'll get to that in a second but if you look right down here these two uh, kind of highlighted in light blue uh, squadrons these are squadrons are your air groups okay and so they'll be over here and what are they made up of 12 typhoons 12 mosquitoes all right and it'll tell you what these are uh, intermediate bomber fighter bomber um, you know, so they will tell you what they are sort of over here to the side in initials. But the point is, <clears throat> is that these planes and pilots are put together into what are called air groups. OK, now then those air groups are assigned to air bases. And I find that this is the part where sometimes people maybe have a little difficulty kind of wrapping their arms around it. And <clears throat> what do I say about say that is because you don't necessarily, you know, in just the real world, think about an air base actually being a unit, right? You think, well, it's got landing strips out there and, you know, it's got some support personnel running around fueling up the planes, working on them, whatever. And you think, well, that, I mean, I just don't really think of that as being a unit. But in this game, they are units. Now, they are fixed, okay? And so you see them right here. That is an air base. Now, it's red. Why is that? Because there are no air groups on that air base. Uh, where it's green, there are air groups at that air base, okay? And so that's all the green and the red mean. Now, what else do are we looking at? And we'll go much deeper into air bases, but what do we see here in the in the representation? Well, this is a this one right here is a level three air base. How do I know that? Because it's got three runways. All right. This is a level two air base. How do I know that? It's got two runways. This is a level one air base. And so air bases have kind of some distinctive qualities. They are fixed on the map. You can't move them. All right. But they are units. They're units just like uh, the other units in the game. But they are fixed on the map where they are located now. And they have three dis different sizes. One, two, 
and three, and that all goes into how many engines they can have stacked at their airbase. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go back down here to planes and pilots. And planes in this game either have one, two, or four engines, all right? Well, how did the designers uh, deal with the fact that, you know, let's just say this little level one uh, air base out here. What if you wanted to put, you know, 500 B-17 fortresses on this, right? Well, uh, you know, how do you deal with that in the game? How do you think about penalties? How do you say, well, that, I mean, that air base isn't big enough to handle all of that. Well, they came up with this system based on engines, all right? And so these different level air bases can handle so many engines. And just as I'm going to say this, it's not absolutely specifically true, but as a generalization, it's 90 engines, 180 engines, and 270 engines based on the size of the airfield. OK, so let's say and again, this is a generalization because there's a little more that goes into it, but we'll get into that later. But just as a generalization, let's say that you had those big B-17s with four engines. All right. You could conceivably put 22 of those on a level one airbase before it starts to get over stacking penalties. All right. And that really goes into how fast maintenance will be done. Uh, you just have penalties like that when you overstack an airfield. So you could put 22 of those on a level one airfield. On a level two airfield, you could put, you know, based on these rules, right? It's a little different again, but based on these rules, you could put, gosh, I'm no mathematician, but you could put about 45 of them here. And then on this one, you could put, what is this, like uh, 80, 70, 70 times 4 is 280? Okay, but like 68, something like that. So you get to kind of get your, you know, feeling of the size of these air bases. And it's all based on how many engines the aircraft have. Now you may say, well, I don't know much about planes or I don't know about planes of this era. Generally, fighters uh, are, you know, single engine aircraft, generally speaking. OK, uh, some of them are twin engine aircraft, meaning two. Um, you very seldom, I don't think there are any four engine fighters. All right. Bombers are usually twos and fours and more tactical bombers would be like twos. Uh, shorter range bombers would be two. The big, big beasts of the sky, the B-17 forts or something like that. That is a four engine aircraft. OK, so air bases are where you will have your air groups. All right. Then. Those air bases are assigned to air commands. So there are command units out on the map, and you see them here. They have the infinity symbol. Those are command units. All right. Now, one little wrinkle to that is air bases are assigned commands, and air groups are assigned commands. Okay. And so these air groups also have a command unit. The air bases have a command unit they're attached to. Those two things kind of work together. And I would say generally you always want an air group, an air group of a command. You generally always want that at an air base of the same command. So let's just say, I don't know, I'm just picking one. This air base here is connected to this command headquarters. All right you would generally want air groups at this air base that are also looked to this command headquarters for its command. If you don't have that, you will get a penalty. It doesn't mean you can't do it. So let's just say there are planes that are under this unit's command, and we'll get into these command headquarters soon enough. But let's just say you had air groups that were attached to this, and for some reason you had to fly them into this air base. That's okay. I mean, it's not prohibited by the game. You just take certain penalties for having them there. And what are these penalties and what do they mean? Well, let's go back to air bases again. So at air bases, you have something called air support. All right. 
AS. I did that backwards, all right? AS is really nothing more than uh, su uh, supporting the aircraft that are in, at the airbase. So if they need fuel, if they need repair, the pilots need meals, they need new shoelaces, whatever the case may be, you have support elements at that airbase that provide it. Now that's not automatic immediately when you move aircraft there. The game though will move support elements wherever you meet, you move air groups. So if this one, it's now red, right? There's no air groups here. If we move air groups there, it may take a turn or two, but then the game will get air support there. But that's something to keep in mind. The game does manage all of the air support for you, but there can be a delay. So if you were going to transfer this, you know, transfer air groups over to this air base, um, you have to keep that in mind. It may be a turn or two before they get air support and air support will go into how many missions they can fly, how well, how fast and how well damaged aircraft are repaired. Um, that's what air support does. The game manages that for you. You don't manage air support with one exception that we'll get to. But keep in mind, you know, there is a delay. It's not like you move air groups here and just automate, you know, uh, presto, uh, the, you know, somebody came down, granted a wish and put air support here. It takes a turn or two to move air support to that new air base. All right, so let's clear out of that. And let's go back and talk about these individual things that we were talking about. And now this time, Let's start at the top and let's start at the air command. So we'll go here first and you see the USSTAF. Now, what is that? Well, it's the United States Str Strategic Air Force. This is the main command of all US air units in Europe. All right. Um, then you have the 8th US Air Force and its commander is the USSTAF, USTAF. For sure. No, I don't know. That probably no one called it that. You also then have the RAF Coastal Command here and the RAF headquarters. Now, surprisingly, given all of the aircraft that you have in this game, you really don't have that many commands that you have to think about. There just aren't that many. And we'll get into it here in a second, but RAF Bomber Command reports to RAF headquarters. RAF headquarters is the head overall command for British Air Forces, you know, British Commonwealth Air Forces in this game. All right. So on one side, you have the USS TAF, which is the head of the US Air Forces, overall command of US Air Forces. And you have the RAF which is the head of all British Air Forces, all right? So pretty much everything, well, I say pretty much uh, all air commands in this game uh, report to one of those two ultimately, ultimately, okay? And so you have RAF Fighter Command, which is, you know, a lower command headquarters, and you have RAF Headquarters, RAF Headquarters. Okay, let's go to the Commander's Report where this becomes a little more clear. Let's go to Headquarters. I've already... I already had that selected uh, for air headquarters here. Then we'll go to none, and then we'll go to air commands. All right, RAF headquarters, that's the main headquarters. You'll see it's higher headquarters is RAF headquarters, which means it is the higher headquarters for everybody. USS TAF, same deal. It's uh, the highest headquarters for United States Air Forces. It reports to no one, no man, except for God. Um, then you have the Mediterranean Allied Air Command that reports back to RAF headquarters. RAF Transport Command reports to RA RAF headquarters. RAF Fighter, RAF Bomber, RAF Coastal. So you have these lower commands, and we'll draw that out in a second. They all report up to the main headquarters, which is RAF headquarters. On the U.S. side, you have two different Air Force commands, the 8th U.S. Air Force and the 15th U.S. Air Force. They both report to USS TAF. So just for the visual people out there, it really comes down to this. For the Brits, you have the RAF, all right? 
They have a few commands underneath them. They have the fighter command. They have the bomber command. They have the coastal command. Um, gosh, I'm going to forget one. That, you know, you get the idea. I think they have a tactical command. They have like four or five headquarters. There. Oh, we see it over here. Transport, fighter, uh, and then here is the main overall RAF command. But the point is, is RAF is at top, and then it's got four or five uh, other command units underneath it. Then, underneath them, you have the air bases, all right? You have air bases and air groups under their command. And again, generally, you should keep air groups. Let's just say this is tactical. Uh, well, let's just take one that's over here. It's RAF transport. Let's call it transport command, okay? This is transport then. RAF transport command. It has air groups underneath it, and it has air bases underneath it. Generally, you want to keep these together. Uh, you can't move the air bases, which means the air groups are going to have to go to those air bases, generally speaking. All right? Same thing with coastal. Same thing with bomber. Same thing with fighter. It's got air bases and air groups. All right? Air base, air group. And then under the air groups here... You've got fighter, or you've got, I'm sorry, planes and pilots, all right? So, you know, essentially, these air groups fly onto air bases. You try to have them in the same command, and it's these planes and these pilots make up the air group. The air group's on an air base. The air base reports directly to a command, which will be like a secondary command out here, and that all reports up to RAF. For the U.S., it's the USSTAF is the main overall command, all right? And you only have to remember, too, it's got the 8th and it's got the 15th, and it works the exact same way. The 8th and the 15th both have air bases that report to them, and they have air groups that report to them. Now, if you've been playing War in the East 2, and I know a lot of you have that are on the channel, you, what's missing here? There are no such things as AOGs in War in the West. So what am I talking about? If you haven't played War in the East 2, and I don't mean to complicate things, but I just want to say this because I know there are a lot of you out there that play both games, and I just you know want you to get your mind around this. In War in the East 2, you have air groups. Those air groups are aggregated to in, together into something called an AOG. An AOG is just, let's say, four or five air groups put together that then go to this command. That step is not in War in the West. In War in the West, you go directly from the air command to the individual air groups that are made up of 12, 48, 60 planes, whatever makes up that air group, uh, reports directly to the command. And again, we go all the way to the bottom with planes and pilots. All right, so let's get off that for a second. And let's just look at RAF headquarters, the top of the British food chain here. What do we have? You, well, you can see it's got the five X's, which in all Grigsby games and generally in NATO nomenclature uh, means it is the top command, supreme command, all right? It's got the air headquarters symbol, okay? It's got the zero combat strength and it's got 50 movement points. You could move this around, but you never should or never would really. Uh, it does have strategic moving point movement points, meaning you could move it on rail, you could move it across the sea. Uh, I guess it's possible you could eventually put this in France or something if you really wanted to, uh, but probably no reason to do that. Um, it's got zero planes, or ze I'm sorry, these are air groups. How many air groups? It has zero air groups directly under its command. It does have 16 air bases directly under its command. Uh, doctrines, we'll get to that in the next couple of videos. RAF headquarters itself has 40,000 men that are helping run the headquarters, making sure the trains run on time, or in this case, the planes run on time. It does have some uh, guns out here. I guess they just go out and fire that when they've had too many pints of ale. 
you know, sure, I guess if RAF's going to get overrun, they can get out there and play around with their 64 guns. They do know, do not have tanks, though, which is probably a good idea for flyboys. All right, let's right-click here. RAF headquarters is run by Charles F.A. Portal. Okay, it's got the uh, nice RAF banner here. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, here you see, just like every other unit in war, any you know, war in the West, war in the East, or war in the East too, it's got a TOE, a table of equipment. We'll go and look at the elements that make that up, but as you'll see here, it's just support. That's it. That's what makes up headquarters units generally in all of these games. Uh, it's just support. And when you think, well, is that like a support unit? No, it's a different concept. They're support elements. And that just means it's people. It's people that do support stuff. You know, imp the kind of, uh, you know, I made a joke making the planes run on time, but that's really what they do. It's desk jockeys back there making sure that planes have bullets, that they have fuel, that they do all of that. Uh, and they you know, didn't have computers back there, and they actually had to use pen and paper, if you can imagine that, what the, the dark ages. Uh, so anyway, that is the one ground element that makes this up. They've got support elements, all right? Um, so that TOE kind of governs that. If for some reason, I, I don't ever do this, but if for some reason you wanted RAF to stop taking away so many support elements because you need uh, guys on the desk somewhere else, uh, you could lower that to 80% right here. You can pick it, you know, whatever percentage between. It won't let you go below 50. That should tell you it's probably not a good idea to lower it at all. It's higher headquarters is RAF headquarters. That's how the game, you know, I don't know why they don't just dash this out. It doesn't have a higher headquarters. So it just puts this with an asterisk. Okay. Morale is set at the starting morale for Britain at the start of the game, which is 60. Okay, great. Supply, it does have supply, fuel, ammo needs, etc. If you did want to transport it by train, this is its cost. It also needs some vehicles to get people around, do whatever, and it's motorized. All of these are the kind of things not really going to change for RAF, right? I mean, this is your supreme air headquarters. Let's go to assigned. Assigned will show you um, the different army group headquarters that report to it. So this is kind of a distinction without a difference. The Army Group Headquarters Mediterranean Allied Air Force reports directly to it. This is just another air command. If we go to it, it is another air command. Um, so they've broken these into two, but I, you know, really, as I say, it's a distinction without a difference. RAF Transport, Fighter, Bomber, Coastal. All right, these are your five secondary commands. So I think I had said... Uh, Tactical? No, there is no tactical. It's fighter, bomber, coastal, transport, and Mediterranean, which is all the way down, you know, in the Mediterranean. So that's why they kind of break it off here. Uh, air bases. Now, these are air bases that are directly controlled by RAF. Now, really, you would never want that, right? Because any time that the game needs to make a dice roll to determine if a, an air group passes some test or they get enough supply or fuel or whatever the case may be, you want it to go through as many command parts of the command structure as you can because the game will roll dice at this level, at that level, at that level. So you really don't want any air groups or air bases connected directly to RAF. You would rather put it through one of these. So let's say the game has to decide something and it rolls the dice, right? You would rather it try to pass it on this level first and then go, go up to RAF. So if we were starting this game, we would look very closely at these air bases and where they are and try to put them in the one of these commands that made sense so there's more levels of command which helps you in this game but right now are the way that this scenario starts and i started the introductory scenario air campaign that's what we're looking at here for whatever reason raf has 16 um air bases directly attached to it air support 
RAF doesn't have that. It doesn't have any air groups. It doesn't need that. Supply details, you can go and look at this. Uh, we'll go more into that in the ground units, of course, and when we get into logistics just for the game overall, really for air units, like an air command like this that's all the way back in, in England, there's absolutely no reason to worry about this. Uh, I mean, unless Operation Sea Lion kicks off and then you've got a whole you know believe me you've already lost the game at that point when we start 1943 if the germans are uh invading england uh supply priority we'll get into this more it goes zero to four this has it at a top you know priority that's because it, i mean it's the chief overall let's be honest these guys did have the pick of the litter when it came to getting the supply uh and freight so you know this is probably just realistic that they're the top at a four but we'll get into that in logistics show subordinates here we go you can go and see every single unit that's underneath them now 201 will tell you essentially how many air bases are controlled by the british overall um and here they all are and then you can also see those uh secondary commands we talked about army groups uh, armies okay you could go see all of that um all right so that's raf and this is kind of how an air you know counter is set up this is what i call the back of the card back of the baseball card or whatever is you know this gives you all of the breakdown of what makes up this unit etc okay so let's go to raf transport command which reports directly to raf headquarters okay so this is one of those secondary commands if we look at that you can see it's only got the four x's on top so Four X's reports to five X's. That's how the military works, guys. Um, it needs to be within 90 hexes to be within command. Well, as it is right now, it's stacked right with it. So these guys can go get coffee together or whatever. Uh, if you did move this around, you needed transport down in France. Uh, let's say you put your transport, uh, you, you know, your a command you needed it down here in brussels because a lot of the transport was down here and you wanted those air groups to be in command to raf transport command um you know it just needs to be within 90 hexes to be within command generally speaking the closer it is to its commander the better that's just how these games work uh but it needs to be within 90 to get any command support from it it is controlling 14 air groups in three air bases all right that that report directly to the transport group okay again we'll get to doctrines later it's got 20,000 men 192 guns again they can get out here and fire the guns uh for fun all right well what does ref transport command have well first of all it's commanded by frederick bowhill there he is you can see his stats he's eh, moderate you know he's just average politically uh morale not good is ini the initiative not good this looks like the kind of guy you would want to replace uh bowhill he's not great he's a decent administrator i mean these are all based on uh zero to nine right so he's a decent admin uh, he's only a four in the air. Holy moly, man. But of course, he's only commanding transport aircraft, so it might not be quite as important. But you can get over here, and you can see a guy that's got a seven for his air. And he's like a 775 uh, for the stats that matter. 775 morale initiative admin. And then in the air, he's a seven. That's a pretty dang good commander. But Embry, you may want to save for something that's a little more important uh, because, uh, you know, again, these are transport aircraft. So maybe your commander's not quite as important. I don't know. Maybe the guys that are going to parachute out over France may think it is important how good he is. So until we invade Europe, you may want to have somebody really good in the transport group. Um but anyway, I just wanted to show you the leader and how that works. Dismissal costs. We'll go into command and generals and all that later. Uh, but let's go back down the card here for RAF Transport Command. Again, the TOE, Table of Equipment. You can set that, what you want it to be. This tells you uh, how much is ready. This is how much ready plus damaged. So let's say, you know, it starts to take damage and whatnot. And let's say you have 72% that are ready uh you know of your support let's say it gets bombed at its where it's sitting uh 72 are ready let's say 14 are damaged this would say 72 
86, right? And you would be telling the game right here, I want it to be at 100%, so the game knows that. Its higher headquarters is RAF headquarters. Okay, we already knew that. It says that right over uh, transport. Here we are. Oh, I got... I, come on, that's weird. Anyway, I guess it doesn't matter. I've got this one selected, but I right-click this one. Um, its morale is actually 70. Wow, the guys in the transport group are feeling pretty good. Uh, Britain, again, all of this stuff is logistics, and we'll get into that in a different episode. Uh Elements, okay, same idea with the elements. It's got support. It's got guys that are making sure the transport command is running correctly, okay? It's got a thousand ready support elements, which are men. And this is their fatigue. This is their experience. Support level, plus or minus. We will get into this uh, when we talk about support units. It's a different topic than support elements these are support elements what's assigned here okay we've got thruxton dish fort dish forth i should say and upper hayford these are the three air base units that are assigned directly to transport command okay now where does this uh 14 come from well evidently we've got 14 air groups that are at those air bases so thruxton for instance has a toe because every unit in the game and air bases are considered units has a table of equipment it has elements in it max we've just got that set on auto all right so essentially what it's telling the game is that anytime we have aircraft someplace like at thruxton we want the table of equipment to be 100, essentially. This is aircraft number. This is how many uh, ready aircraft are there. This is how many aircraft total are there. So this is ready total. Let's go out to Thruxton, where it says we have 120 aircraft, 160 overall, 120 ready ones, though. So we go out to Ruxton, and here we go. At Ruxton, you have these air groups. You've got the, the 161 RAF Transport Squadron, 190 RAF Transport Squadron. You get the idea. I won't go all the way through that. But there are 12 ready aircraft in this squadron, 12 in this, 12 in the, you know, 12 in these. This is the aircraft type, the Halifax, the Sterling, the Dakota 3. So there's different kinds of transport aircraft. How many miles traveled, percent traveled. We'll get more into that as we go along. But now let's go down into the actual squadron. Okay, now we're looking at the squadron. Group type is a squadron. It could have up to 24 planes into it. Uh, the Allies... Their well, the British, I should say, their squadrons can have up to 24 aircraft in them. You see here, its headquarters is RAF Transport Command. We already knew that. Um, it's at Thruxton. The base is Thruxton. Now, this command does not report directly to Thruxton. It reports directly to RAF Transport Command. And you could move this to another airbase if you want. Now, if that airbase is not controlled by RAF Transport Command, you will suffer a penalty, okay? But there are lots of empty airbases out here, even in England. So you could take one of these airbases that's empty, and let's say we want transport aircraft here. You could go to that airbase, you could assign it to RAF Transport Command, and then you could fly this squadron down to it, and in the next turn or two, the game will automatically put support into that airbase, and this airbase then would be controlled by RAF Transport uh, Command, and it would say over here, next time, four for airfields that directly report to it, okay? Um, all right, so now we're down here on this level. We may as well build back up from the bottom up. This is the number 161 RAF Transport Squadron. You can see the type of plane, the Halifax. It's a transport plane, Halifax AV. You can even see a nice little picture of it along with the British flag. Excellent. It's in a squadron, which could have up to 24, but actually it has 12 
with four damage. Now remember when we looked at Thruxton, we saw that it had 120 ready planes and 160 planes total. My guess is, is that all of these squadrons start this scenario with 12 ready, and I'm guessing there are 10 squadrons, 12 ready, four damage, which would give you 120 and 160, right? Okay, experience, morale, fatigue, okay, for this squadron. Now, obviously, this is talking about the pilots in the squadron. The plane can't quite get morale. Uh, they've, they've been trying for years to get that kind of AI, but they just can't. Uh, aircraft ready, we got that aircraft in the pool of this type. So if you start to lose Halifax AVs, there are 150 Halifax AVs that are just in the pool that can be drawn down into this unit. And you can see here with replacements, that's, well, we'll excuse me, we'll get into that uh, later on. Uh, ready pilots, so there are 24 pilots that are trained on transport. All right, so you've got 24 pilots in the pool. Naval only, no, that becomes important. We'll talk about that in a future episode. I don't want to say that too many times. You'll be like, gosh, how many episodes are there going to be? Uh, but yeah, we will get to that because there are rules about naval aircraft, and we'll need to get into that later. Uh, you can see all of the stats for this aircraft if you so choose. Uh, the really important ones are engines, right? Because we talked about airfield size or air, I'm going to call them the right name, air bases, air bases. We talked about those size. Well, these aircraft have four engines. You can see that right there. Um, uh, this other stuff's interesting ultimately, but you're probably not going to not fly a mission with the Halifax because it's only got an out, you know, max altitude of 23,000 feet. I mean, it, you really in this game don't have to make those kind of distinctions. Uh, what's really important is how many of them can you get on the airfield and the game will send them on individual missions, but we'll talk about directives later. But you can go through here and look at all this. It's got a standard loadout. You could change the loadout and you can see here, uh, we could put on an auxiliary tank on these all 12 of the planes, well, all 16, I guess, in the squadron. We could put this on here and up their range, but we're not going to go into that for the basic tutorial. Pilots, you can see each individual pilot. Again, you will not be managing that. It's just a cool part of the game that it gets down to this level. It's really quite incredible, to be honest with you. It tells you how many pilots are in this group, uh, their average experience. Um, we'll talk about replacements another time. The type that they're uh, trained to do, their individual experience, into individual fatigue, kills, missions, and their status. All right, so really cool there. Planes, you can see each individual plane here, how much damage these uh, have at this moment, 12, 27, 10, and 27. Now, we've been talking about air support. If you don't have enough air support at your air base, uh, these will not get repaired. You know, I mean, if you have zero air support, they won't get repaired at all. If you're under strength air support, which may happen for a turn or two till the game can get enough air support to your air base, you know, it'll slow this down. Also, if you're at an air base that's not part of RAF Transport Command, there's a 20% penalty. So I was talking about that penalty before about being at air bases that aren't under this direct command. It's about a 20% penalty for repairs, okay? So just something to keep in mind. You could disband this. You may say, why would I ever do that? Well, if these squadrons start getting chewed up and you've got a bunch of squadrons with like five planes left each, you may disband one, send these planes and pilots back to the pool so they can be redistributed distributed out to, you know, you can consolidate, essentially. You can consolidate uh, these air groups if you start losing a lot of aircraft. Air directives, none. We'll get into those later. Mission setting, day and night. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that when it comes to air directives, but some units, uh, especially like in War in the East 2, I don't even fly German aircraft at night at all, at all. Um, if you play War in the Pacific, you don't fly Allied aircraft, American aircraft specifically, 
at night at all. So there, I mean, it actually is important. Uh, by this time in 1944, which is when this scenario started, the Brits had uh, gotten much, much better about flying at night. Uh, so anyway, we'll talk about that at another time. Replacements normal. Um, this really goes to pilots. It, it's, this is not replacement planes. This really goes to pilots, and you can restrict it, priority, trained. Uh, leave it on normal. Just leave it on normal for now. I mean, if you want to get down into that level of micromanagement, you can and feel free. But, you know, at that point, you're going to have to go read the rule book. I'm just not going to go through all of that uh, because we'd be here, you know, for like 20 episodes if we got that deep into the game. Aircraft change. This is um, their upgrade path. OK, the game starts with everything on manual which I don't know why they do that. One of the first things I'll always do when I start a Grigsby game and I go to the air is I go to the commander's report and I change everything to auto. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to get into that level of micromanagement where I go in and decide different upgrade paths for my aircraft. You can see here, you could pick it. So if you don't like the Halifax AV and you've read up on the Sterling 4 and 5 here or 4, I don't know, 4-5 and you say, you know what? Wow, I've got 81 of those in the pool. We've got 48 in other air groups. We have nine factories cranking these Sterlings out. I love this transport aircraft. This is the way I want to go. You can do that. You can even go here and compare the two aircraft if you wish. You can see here the Sterling's got a worse endurance. It's got a worse range. It's got a worse reliability. So you may say, what in the world? I mean, was this an improvement? I'm going to guess it's maybe it's got a bigger capacity. I guess that's possible. Uh, I don't know. We're not going to go through all that. The point is, if you really want to do this, you can go compare the aircraft and you can upgrade them yourself uh, manual. I always turn these to auto and I let the game do it in a historical nature of how these aircraft actually upgrade it. All right. But you know, again, that's the great thing about these games. There are a lot of options and you can go down a rabbit hole about different transport aircraft if you want to and spend hours and days figuring out what's the best transport aircraft or you don't have to do that and you can just put it on auto. I, I do enough micromanagement with other stuff in this game that this is just one I, I let the game automatically upgrade. OK, um, and so that is really, you know, what a squadron looks like, everything that you can look at in here. There are four different sizes of air groups in this game. There are squadrons, there are groups, uh, there are wings for the British. The British have something called the wing, and that all goes into the maximum size of the group here. OK, so squadrons are 24 is their maximum. Now this is under strength a little bit, 12 and four. They It could go up to a size 24 for a squadron. All right, so these are all the ones at Thruxton Air Base. And let's get out of here. And we're back to RAF Transport Command. And we'll see a signed. Let's go back to Thruxton for a minute. Um, and just talk about this. You could, from here, also assign things from the National Reserve. So we have things in the National Reserve, and you'll see an RAF uh, level bomber squadron, RAF fighter bomber squadron. You've got U.S. bomber groups or, you know, squadron. Well, these are groups here. Let's go look at a U.S. group. Why not? Here's an entire U.S. Uh, group. Oh, I guess I, actually, sorry, I put them in here. And you can see the asterisks here. Now they're at this air base. So we do have a National Reserve. And you could actually put this in the National Reserve as we move along in the game. But 451st USAAF level bomber group. It's made up of B-24Hs and Liberators. Uh, there are 39 of these. And if we look at that, you can go and look at all the stats. This is a level bomber. You can look at the picture. But this is all kind of the same. You know, what we talked about. Here's its weapons, its loadout, what you could add to it if you wanted to. If you want to change the loadout, it tells you all of its stats, everything about the pilots. 
shows you every single individual plane. If we look over here, 39 are ready, 6 are damaged, okay? Um, I didn't really want to put that out at Thruxton, but I, okay, I guess we did. So what, uh, what, you know, what can you do about it? So you're going to be assigning these squadrons to air bases. And generally you're going to do it based on what the command is. All right, let's go back up to RAF transport command. What else does it uh, command? Well, dish forth air base and dish forth. It looks like only has one squadron on it. Okay. And one thing I would like to do actually is let's get back over here to RAF Transport Command. We'll select that and you can actually see the blue lines, the three different air bases it commands. Wow, this one's all the way up here. Which one's this? That's Dish Forth. There it is. It's a level three air base. You can see that. Okay. And now, if we look over here, you've got Dishforth British Air Base. It directly reports to RAF Transport Command. It's within 21 of 90 permissible hexes of the, its commander, which is the Transport Command. All right. This only has two hexes. The Air Base has two hexes. Uh, aircraft. This AC stands for aircraft. It's got 12 aircraft that are ready. It has 16 aircraft overall, so 12 ready, 4 damaged. You see its supply, its fuel, and its ammunition situation. And you see here it's got 16 utility aircraft. If we look down here, fighters, bombers, utility aircraft. Utility aircraft can either be um, recon aircraft or they can be transport aircraft okay that's that's utility they both go into that basket and we see here it's got one squadron here of 12 dakota threes now that 12 is the ready aircraft okay it's got 16 overall 12 that are ready uh, 12 Dakota 3s. We can go look at the squadron here. You can see, and it's that same card that we've been looking at, the back of the card for uh, these different units. And so that's Dish Forth, all right? And you can see the orange line back to its RAF Transport Command. So let's pick on that again. And then let's go to this airport. This is Upper Hayford, all right? Let's go back to Transport Command. This is the one we just looked at. This is Thruxton. Back, right back to that one, and you'll see with Thruxton, British Air Base, RAF Transport Command, it's within eight hexes of the 90 permissible. Uh, it's got 159 aircraft that are ready, 205 overall, supply, fuel, ammo. It's got no fighters. It now has 45 bombers because I put that U.S. group here. They're like a fish out of water. These Americans are walking around saying, why is everybody speaking this English? I don't understand. Uh, and I don't like I don't like shepherd's pie. Um, yeah, so we got 45 overall bombers here, 39 that are ready. That's, you know, but it's showing us the total number that are here. We've got 160 utility aircraft in this case we know they're transport aircraft uh no recon and you see what they're made up of and it'll show you all the ready ones and you can go out to the individual squadrons okay um so those that's how the command works if we went back here and we went to fighter command you can see all of the air bases that fighter command commands and there's no limit to this in the game uh, unlike uh, ground units let's say like core headquarters or army headquarters there's no limit to how much these air commands how many air bases or air groups that they can command and you can see fighter command uh, is directly uh, in command of 29 air groups 24 air bases and you can see if we counted all those blue lines it would be 24 let's right click on this and you can see all the different air base locations all right and you can then also if we go out to those air bases themselves you can see the air groups and the kind of aircraft that make up those. All right, so just to review before we go for this episode, you may say, well, I don't know anything more about the air war than I did before. 
I understand what you're saying, but this is just the building blocks. Once you understand this stuff, then when I show you error directives and I show you how you move these error groups around, it'll all make a lot more sense to you. So it's just, you know, it's the, it's the basic building blocks. And what are those again? All right, we'll get the pencil out. We've got planes and pilots that make up air groups and those air groups can be of various sizes they may be squadrons they may be groups they may be uh, wings uh, and they have different sizes but they come together these planes and pilots and make an air group all right those air groups are stationed at air bases all right air bases are fixed and they have support for the air groups. So they're fixed and they have support. You do not directly control the support. The game will send support to the air bases, but it may take a turn or two. So when you're moving these things, well, we'll get into that later, okay? Air bases, they're fixed, they have support. They report directly to what I'll call secondary commands, all right? So let's just call that command two, all right? So they report to these secondary commands like fighter command, transport command, okay? Those commands command both air bases and air groups. And you try to match these two up. So you're wearing the same pair of sock, you know, you're wearing the same sock on both feet. Uh, air, air bases and air groups. You try to do that. If you can't do it, it's okay, but there is a penalty. And then command two goes to big overall command, which is either RAF or USSTF, which is the big overall command, okay? And we'll get into next time how you move these around, why you would move them, how you transfer them, the mechanics of all that, uh, and then we'll get into directives and how you actually prosecute the air war. So thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully that all made a lot of sense. If it doesn't, as we go on here, I'll be kind of you know doubling back and talking about these topics as we go into the more kind of advanced topics. But these are the basic building blocks of what makes up the air war. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.